Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about websites, SEO, all that fun stuff that you may not know about. You may have a website or you may not, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Hey, thanks for checking me out. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it's better than a cat video. Uh, we have 220 plus episodes and four years of content. So go back and binge it all. And you can watch my hairstyles change over the year. It's actually getting a little thin. So, but either way, it's on YouTube. It's on anywhere that SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, any of those platforms for podcasts. Uh, make sure to check it out. And if you are one of the cool kids, that means you watch every episode or listen, you've thumbs up the videos on YouTube. You've left me a comment because you're that awesome. And more importantly, you've ordered through me, shameless plug. Well, thank you. It is because of you that I get to uh, live the lavish lifestyle that I do. Thank you so very, very much. And if you want to be uh, one of the cool kids, my number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So call me, text me, just shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. We can go from there. And it would be like an awesome ultimate uh, high five. So thank you for that. Another shameless plug real quick, American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you haven't gotten it, get it, awcmag.com and get some of these cool stickers that are behind me. But anyway, all right. So today we are talking to pretty much the greatest company I've ever dealt with ever. Not exaggerating. Uh, no, it is a monk SEO. And uh, by the way, before I get into all of this, if you were at the huge, they were there. They had one of the coolest uh, trade show exhibit booths there that happened to actually get lost on the way back but other than all that headaches uh what's going on man <laughs> not much man we actually we just got the crate yesterday I sure heard. Up. yeah that's crazy we, our, we finally got our poles that we stuffed in there that we bought from <laughs> wcr so yeah everybody's pretty happy <laughs> that is uh it's so funny too if people don't know you had like a crispy new i mean like everything was done up absolutely awesome for the show and then they lose it and you got to be like uh Great. That was, that was an awesome investment there. Oh man, we were stressed out. It was, uh, you know, we did, we did put down the value a little bit high just in case that something like that happened, but I knew they weren't going to lose it. They got it here and yeah, we're, we're set. Our guys are happy as of today is the first day using the new poles. So they're, nice. they're pretty jacked. <laughs> nice. I always think it's funny that they can lose a giant crate. Like where does it go? Is there right. this like building somewhere where people are like, I don't know whose this is. Like, totally. There's stickers I, I and stuff. We, we were sitting there like, there's no way they're going to lose this thing. It's impossible. I mean, it's not like luggage. It's This thing's got to be somewhere close. <laughs> yeah, we had, uh, this was the last year it was in Atlanta. Uh, we had our crate down there. They got to the show, you know, everybody, they unload all the crates and our crate wasn't there. We kept talking to them. They're like, oh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And they couldn't find our crate. It just was lost. So they all packed up and they all went home, the shipping company. So we drove all the way down to the shipping yard. And ended up having these people go through all the crates. We were down there going through empty trucks. And they left our crate on one of the, the uh, trucks, like the, the backs, in the lot somewhere. They just happened to find it. And we got it down to the show at like 6 p.m. on like Wednesday oh, to like rip it no. up. I'm like, oh, on. man. We had one chance to do this. But yeah. So <laughs> and, and with WCR, uh, FedEx, UPS, it doesn't matter. They lose stuff all the time. It's absolutely absurd. There's got to be crazy. some like really cool sales somewhere of all this lost stuff that they got to like just sell or something. But Or you got a FedEx driver that's trying to start a pressure washing company. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, man, I got everything. I just got to lose a couple more things. I got all the pieces I need. That's right. That's right. Maybe we shouldn't put the 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 zero and WCR tape on the box. And we won't know what it actually is. No doubt. <laughs> But uh, for anybody who didn't meet you or doesn't know who you are or has never heard of Monkey SEO and just in general, tell us about you and the company a little bit. Yeah, so I'm Bobby Williams. Uh, I'm Justin Monk's partner. We started this company back in 2016. Um, it was kind of a, a project that we had talked about for a long time. Uh, I've always been kind of a closet computer nerd. He's, uh, he's a guy with great ideas, had a window cleaning pressure washing business that was doing well. And uh, back in, gosh, I think what year was NOLA? 2011, he went First down. First one, yeah. Yeah, I think that's when it was. I, I want to say that that was the one that he went down to. He had one guy working for him. He was working as well, you know, 
did a pretty good number, comfortable for his family and felt good about it. Met a bunch of other guys doing the same number. Flash or go forward in a year to the next show. And he's got the same guys doing double his number now. And he's like, well, what do you do different? They said, we got a website. We've got internet presence. So he said, okay, great. Comes back, builds a website and just sits there waiting for the phone to ring, staring at it. <laughs> Nothing happens. So, yeah. so he asked his web designer, you know, Hey, my phone's not ringing. What's going on? And he said, they said, you've got to get SEO. He said, sign me up for SEO. So signs up for SEO, six months goes by, doesn't move a single ranking. Justin is a, he tracks everything. I mean, when, yeah. when there's anything to be tracked, he tracks it. So he calls him up and he said, you know, Hey, this isn't working. He said, I'm going to figure this out on my own. Dove into it in 2000, I want to say it was 13 timeframe. By 2014, he's up to, I want to say it's 12 employees, you know, multiple rigs out there, route cars and an office manager. And he said, you know, this is something that I need to bottle and, and sell. So 2016, he called me and told me, hey, it's time. You know, we talked about doing this in about 2015 when everything was really working well. And uh, I wasn't ready at that point. I had a, a pretty good gig going uh, in the real estate industry. And um, he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to start this. And by mid 2016, I saw that it was taken off and I was like, all right, here we go. So <laughs> we, uh, we partnered up at that point and it's just been, man, it's been a, a great ride ever since we've, we just uh, had so much fun doing this, helping people doing the exact same thing that we did for his company. So. Yeah. And you guys have really, really, I've known Justin for a long, long time. I just recently met you uh, actually in person for the first time, but um, this whole SEO thing, the website thing, there's been other companies that have kind of come into play and kind of come in and come out, but you guys have absolutely taken the industry for window cleaning, pressure wash on like you guys are the number one in that whole realm just because of what you do. So that niche right there is just, it's gotta be working pretty darn well for you guys. It is, you know, and that's the, the biggest thing is we, we know exactly what works for this industry. Um, you know, we've, we have other clients as well, lawyers, doctors, things like that, but we have this perfect blueprint for this, this industry. It's worked and, you know, we've watched it work on our own. We've watched it work on hundreds of clients now, and it's just, uh, it, there's no, there's nothing that can be said for other than experience. You know, we've, yeah. we've tested this all on our own stuff and we've watched things fail on testing because we, you know, typically when you're a marketing agency, you don't have another business to test on. So you're testing on your clients and yeah. that can get scary, especially in this, you know, Google is, man, they are not very lenient on anybody trying to manipulate them. If yeah. you get caught by Google doing something wrong, you're, you're just, it's time to start a new website. You know, you got to get a new domain. So crazy. we've, we've done, done, you know, we've made those mistakes, but fortunately it's been on our own products uh, or our own companies or test companies that we set up. We do that quite a bit as well. And, yeah. you know, we uh, rank in cities that aren't even real cities. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Number one in uh, Flankenstein. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's it, man. I'm going to write that one down. Cause that's, we always like to, to push the limits and see uh, that's our, when we don't think something's going to work, we see if it'll rank in, in that specific city. So and yeah. that's kind of our, our test subject before we put it out for uh, live testing on our real website. So <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, we got guys and girls that are listening now that, of course, know what a website is, right? You guys have websites. They've, 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 they've heard the value of it. For me, website's number one most uh, highest grossing uh, form of paid advertisement, in my, my opinion. But... Some people don't understand the SEO concept. So tell me a little bit about what is SEO? Like we've heard the terms, we've heard those letters, but what does it mean? What does it actually mean? I'll tell you what, if you haven't heard about it every day for the past two years, man, you're, you got a good spam filter. So, yeah, yeah. so SEO is search engine optimization. It's essentially where optimizing yourself to make Google want to show you in the top of the search engine results. Um, we always used to have a, uh, a banner that we bought when we, uh, when we bought 462 from Chris Cartwright. And it said, uh, the easiest place to hide a dead body is on the second page of Google. So, yeah. it, you yeah. know, you, 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 nobody looks on the second page. Everybody goes down the first few results. What we do is we optimize your website for those first positions. And 
it's uh, it's vital these days. You know, it's uh, it's without being on that first page and more specifically the first three results, even you're, you're pretty much invisible to anybody that's out there searching. You know, if, yeah. if somebody knows your your name, they're going to find you no matter what. You could be on the 10th page of Google. If they're looking for, you know, uh, Josh Cronin's window cleaning, they're going to find it no matter what. But if they're searching for window cleaning in their city, they're not, they don't know anybody yet. And this is the client you want to capture because they're, they don't know you yet and you want to get in front of them. So you want to be that first person that they call. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like selling a car. I could have the most rare, super exotic sports car that everybody wants, but I keep it in my garage with a uh, cover on it and I don't list it for sale and I have it there and I go, well, if somebody wants it, they'll come find me. You can't, you can't find it if it's hidden from everybody. That's SEO. Like we talked about before on the show quite a bit, you could have the most sexy website. Everything's done up, right? It flows. It feels great. Oh, it would sell anybody, but if people aren't finding the website, that's the problem. So, I mean, SEO, is it as important or more important than having a great website? Oh, absolutely more important. I mean, you can, you can have a, a tiny page with just your phone number on it. That's, and that's what we find almost all clients are looking for. Just give me a number I can call. I want to get you out to do, you know, treat my moss or clean my gutters. Just give me a phone number. I just want to yeah. call. I want to get on the, on the schedule and, and that's it. And if you're not number one, man, you might get lucky if you're number two and the first guy might not answer his phone, yeah. but it's, I'll tell you what, being number one, those top three positions are so important. And, and number one, you know, obviously being the, the most important. So, yeah. And you know, what's crazy is, is everybody, everybody's looking for things to do that are cheap to get and advertise and everything else. But here's the thing, think about you, even though you're not your target market, but think about how do you find something every time we're like, Oh, we should go to this place. I'll always look it up online first. I always will look it up in Google because it gives me directions and all that. It'll also tell me the times and phone numbers, and then it will give me reviews, but it will also tell me what's around. And I'm telling you, I'll search food near me. And if something doesn't pop up, even if I know the restaurants there, it just doesn't come into my brain. Cause that's how we search nowadays, right? Google just owns that platform. They're the ones that feed people information you just got to kind of get on their good side. You have to do what they, what they require of you to kind of get there. Absolutely. And that's, it's, it's funny too, because I mean, Google is, it's in total command. I mean, I remember back when I remember being a teenager and Yahoo was, that's where everybody went, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then slowly I, I remember my wife saying, Hey, I'm, I'm on Google. Uh, I was like, really? You're on Google? Why, why, what's so good or great about Google? You know, I'm still a Yahoo guy. And it took me, it took me a while to come around and start searching Google. So. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> if you really think about like, I mean, me and you are old enough. Some people that are listening may not be, but it was like uh, this weird battle of like ask Jeeves and Yahoo and Google and Bing and all these like search engines. And in my brain, when that was happening, I'm like, why are people paying to be search engines? That makes no sense. And then Google exists. And it's like, oh yeah, (laughs) Google has everything now. And it's all from all the traffic that they get to their website. Absolutely. And, and, you know, Facebook too, Facebook's, uh, you know, that's something we'll, we'll get into a little later, but that that's huge as well right now. I mean, there's, those are the Google and Facebook are the two controlling interests as far as let's find something on the internet. So, yeah, well, I have to pull something out of your brain here, but tell me like the number one cringe worthy thing that you see on people's websites, because I have to be honest and none of you are listening right now. I know everybody who has sent me websites that's listening. They were great, but I've had some in the past that weren't super great. People have sent them in and I've just gone like, Wow. But like, what do you see is like the number one cringeworthy thing that people do on websites and send them over for you? Man, that's a, that's a tough question. There's so much to, <laughs> to go with, but, uh, Oh, you I, know, love I, think when, the, I love when ahead. people, when you look at the website and you it looks like the old angel fire or geo cities <laughs> websites, you know, where it's like, did you made this one on your own? And they're like, yeah, I did. And it's like, okay, yeah, I, I can see it. But. And that's, we, we get that a lot. You know, we see that and we, we see some that are developing, you know, a year or two ago that look like that. So it's yeah. like, okay, we need to, we need to up this presence a little bit. Um, but you know, the biggest thing I think for me is contact information. A lot of people bury that sometimes bury it on another page that you have yeah. to go to. Don't give them any way to get a hold of you. And it's like, man, that's, that should be the first thing that everybody sees, you know, even yeah. 
even in search results, you want to see contact information. Because sometimes nobody even clicks your page; they just go straight to the SERP. So, it's yeah. I'm sorry. There we go with the, the, nerd, the nerdy term. SERP is search engine results. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, nerds <laughs> rule the world. It's fine. Oh, it's crazy, fine. right? It's yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a whole new world now. I'm watching my kids go through that. So, oh yeah, you know, coding <laughs> exists for kids. Like, there's coding classes. Like, yeah. how cool is that? Kids aren't like back in the day when you were a coder and like little nerd. You know, people like ah, oh, look at this web nerd, and now they're like, oh, you're making a lot yeah. more money than me, and now kids can my, do it for fun. My sixth grader came home from school last Thursday. It was his first day. He was, said this coding class was his favorite class. And I had no clue it was even offered until he got put into it. So I'm from, now crazy. I'm like, ah, following dad's footsteps. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. See, now you got a nice uh, a guy to do all your custom coding when uh, when he gets to that age. Absolutely. He's going to better get a crash course. I'm going to put him to work all summer. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if somebody's listening, they're like, hey, okay, I, I got the website. You know, I'm thinking about doing that. What does it cost? Like, give me a ballpark. I'm not talking about specific numbers, nothing to hold you to, but give me a, an idea of like, what does it cost to have an actual website built? Because a lot of people think that websites are these big, like, you know, $20,000, $30,000 projects that I think they maybe watch too much TV maybe, but I mean, sure. what does something like that cost? Is it, is it, a, is it something that a window cleaner can, can, can go out and get? Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely affordable. Um, it used to be back in the old days. Yeah. Websites ran that 20,000 and was just an arm and a leg. A normal person wasn't going to go and just dump that into a website at that point. Nowadays, a twenty thousand dollar website probably wouldn't be a bad investment because it is your, you know, <laughs> it's your it's number one advertisement. It's not the phone book anymore. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but nowadays, I mean, our websites, if you're if you're just buying a website without any other packages, no bundling, anything like that, they start about forty five hundred dollars. Um, we, we do do a better price for that. And for all you listeners on, of this podcast, we do have something special for you that, uh, we're going to, we're going to let Jersey roll out at when the podcast launches. So, nice. um, some special packages, uh, just for, for you guys. So, um, yeah. so yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it really isn't as bad as it used to be. And, you know, we do offer payment plans as well. We know the window cleaning industry. We know how things slow down in the winter. We're very flexible. You know, Justin and I make the decisions on what happens with the, with the budgets and, and, and the payments. And, you know, we have, a, we have some people that have to pause through the winter, you know, especially being up here in the snow, we know there, there's nothing coming in in the winter, you know, the doors are closed. Yeah. We're, we're headed down to Mexico to enjoy a couple months and come back. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is, so I, I get a lot where I like to, and listen, you guys know, I'm just nobody, right? I'm a nobody. We're just talking right now. So if you decide that you want to do your own website, your own SEO, your own everything, I'm not telling you you have to do it another way. But I know a lot of people who try to reinvent the wheel. They try to spend all winter putting something together that they're not happy with. When in essence, I mean, you're talking about, you know, even if you broke that into a year, it's like 375 bucks a month, which we're spending way more on just other types of advertising. So that kind of thing is, is really, really worth it when it comes to like just building it and having it done. But the big thing is, is that a website is not just pictures on a page. It's all information and the information has to be crawled. Like the internet has to know, the Google machine has to know what's on that page and it has to be done right. There's so many people who, and there, there's so many things that change over years. Like back in the day, you remember it was like, um, this is the content would be written. It'd be like, you know, we are XYZ window cleaning. We specialize in window cleaning for Des Moines, you know, Iowa. We uh, always do window washing in Des Moines. You know, like they, they put all of that down and it's also key word heavy that it didn't make sense to read, but they thought that it helped them. And at times it kind of did. And now Google is just so stinking smart in their engines that they know fake content. They know that if there's no value in something, that it's not even going to rank. So a lot of times people who have all these websites put everything together, they get done and they didn't even really do it right. And, and that's, it's still common. It's still very common that people overload the keywords. Um, they, you know, they, there's still bad, you know, I mean, backlinking is a big portion of SEO and there's tactics that worked five years ago. There's tactics that worked two years ago yeah. that don't work today. And people are still trying this and it's hurting them. I mean, they don't, they don't know it's hurting them. They just know they're not getting results. But we always, uh, there's a saying in, around here that we always say, Google's not dumb, it's just slow. It takes a long yeah. time to catch up. So once it does catch up though, there's, we've seen websites that we've gone out and researched for clients that want to work with us 
where we say you have to start over. You, you've had bad tactics in the past and Google is never going to allow you to be a top three result. Yeah, which is which is nuts when people don't really realize that they even did anything wrong. So it's uh, and and there's a lot of there's still designers to this day that don't know they're doing anything wrong when they rebuild a website for someone. There, yeah. There's certain things that you can do in the process of a redesign that will completely ruin all the rankings that that site's taken years to earn. Yeah. And, and that's why it's, it's so valuable to find somebody that is well versed in those situations. There's yeah. there. I mean, there's a hundred che- things in a checklist that we have that we go over when we're rebuilding a website to make sure that none of the rankings are lost and that it's set up for future rankings to, to continue increasing in the future. Yeah. And understand that Google doesn't care about you. You're not paying them. I mean, you can do paid ads. But we're just talking about organic, you know, SEO. They don't care. So if you got an awesome uh, Google listing or a map view or something, you're listed all over and all of a sudden it's all gone. You can't call Google and be like, excuse me, Mr. Google, could you please fix my, like, they don't care. You can kind of work it. I had one time where it was a competitor and he like uh, did, you know, all the things that he did to try to get it brought down. And my Google, it was my places listing was completely dropped and it was down for like seven months. And I just couldn't get them back on. I talked to people. They're like, oh, well, we'll go ahead and we'll put it into our, they don't care because it's a free service. So they don't have to do anything for you. So if you screw something up, don't think that you could just call them and be like, hey, I just want to say, sorry, uh, we're redoing it and have it go back to normal. It's not how it works. Absolutely. And it's been even worse since COVID. We, we actually do have the phone number to give them a call. And, <laughs> you know, it's still not that great. But since COVID, oh my gosh, it's impossible. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we, we're, we're fortunate to have some great connections with some, uh, with some Google advanced users that Google, they can go in and do things that a normal person couldn't. And Google trusts them. There's only about, I think, 12 or 15 of them in the country. And we've had a long relationship with a few of them. And it, that's helped a ton. But man, I'll tell you what, if, if I wasn't in this industry and I didn't have those connections, it, it's downright impossible. Uh, we've had people hire us just for that. We have a, a company that locally that does uh, window shade tinting and she's been fighting google for three months with their map listing and she goes i've been sending emails i've been doing everything that it says to do and i still can't get it and wow. they're they're now a curtain client of course so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go you know a guy i always tell people like you know exactly. do you have a supply guy now they have an internet guy they call you like uh i'm having a problem with the googles can you help me like, yep right. exactly <laughs> Yeah, there's something that people do too. I see a lot of uh, websites. You guys, if you're listening or watching too, you may be doing this, but think about your website. Go over your website later, by the way. But people put uh, clip art or they put like general pictures or they find a picture and they use it that uh, these are pictures that actually will get negative, like negative ticks on it, right? I mean, if you got content out there that there's 20 other window cleaners using the same exact picture, they know that you can't pull one over on them. Right. I mean, absolutely. Too many pictures, I guess can be bad or bad pictures, but I would rather see a picture that's not perfectly lit or high resolution over something. That's just like some general, like, you know, shower squeegee guy, you know? Sure. And that's, and one of the biggest things is duplicate content. There's so many people that run out and build their website quick and just go find somebody that's out of their market and grab their content off their website throw it onto theirs, you know, maybe change up a few things, but without having unique content on your website, Google sees that duplicate content, they'll find it. And they do not like that one bit. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll actually give you both negative. They'll, I think they gave a little bit more to the person that's had it longer, you know, cause anybody could go steal content, but yeah. it, it doesn't work well. So it's uh it's nuts to the, I mean, Google, just Google, we say Google, but it could be all these search engines. Of course, the internet's a, a huge thing, but uh, it's amazing how they're actually trying to better the internet. They're trying to make like, if you have value on your website, we're going to put it up there. Or if you have value, we're going to list it a little bit better. That's comments, you know, that's reviews. That's all those other things that help to that. It kind of helps boost that. You know, if somebody wants to do some of their own SEO and maybe dabble with it, what would you kind of recommend somebody to like, hey, here's a couple quick tips to just kind of, go on the SEO route and maybe help yourself a little bit. So jumping back to what you were saying before about not paying Google for Google, it's all about customer experience. And when you're, 
paying for their ads, they love you, right? They, they yeah. love you paying for those ads, <laughs> but they know that they can't just run on those ads. That's why they do have the organic section. And for that, they just look at what's the best experience for my client that's coming to my site and then looking and going to your site. Why should I recommend you? And that's the biggest thing, making sure that the page is easily nav navigatable, that everything lines up. It's not hanging off the screen. There's not, you know, the, 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 everything flows well. There's an easy way to contact, things like that. And, and fresh content, Google loves fresh content. They, they yeah. eat that up. Um, you know, that's, I would say that's the, the easiest thing for anybody to do is just put yourself in the, the shoes of the consumer, go to your website, say, okay, I want to come out and get window cleaning. And I, I go through my website, look at exactly what somebody would do, the process that they would go through. Google, it's funny, they're, they're robots. They can see all that. They, yeah. they know exactly what the user experience is. And, and today it's more important than ever. It's been maybe two months since they did their, their, their core uh, update. And one of the big ones, and it's all about user experience now, about mm -hmm. page speed loading and, you know, things, how fast your, your site comes up, how fast the elements are to use, because sometimes that lags behind. There's, that's probably the most important thing that I can say to anybody that's just worried about their on page on their website itself. Yeah. And you said something that I always find interesting is that people will, will send me a message or say something, but, oh, I've been on the first page. Uh, I got up to the first page, you know, a year ago. And uh, I just haven't really done much with it. You know, go look at that. You, people don't go in incognito view. They go on their normal view and it's showed that they've been to that website 40 times. So as soon as you type in window cleaning in wherever, all of a sudden it pulls up and they're like, yeah, we're still number one, but they're not number one, right? What is the importance of like that constant contact, that kind of constant creation? Like talk a little bit about that. Like what's too much? What's too little? Like what's that sweet, sweet spot in content? There's, there's never too much for Google. Um, I wouldn't recommend changing, say, your, your homepage. You don't want to change that every day. Once Google likes something, you, want to, you kind of want to quarantine it and not touch it. I would, I would leave the content alone once Google starts to, starts to like it. Yeah. But as far as other pages, blogging, things like that, absolutely. The more, the merrier. Google loves it. They love, they love fresh content. They love when you're engaging with your clients. Um, that that's super important and, and touching back on that, the, the searching yourself and, and coming up number one, it's a constant thing that we talk about in, with all of our clients because nobody ever uses an, an incognito window. They also, sometimes your, your business is based out of your home, which might not be in the area that you're trying to service. And there's tools that we can use to go in and see what you rank in that area. You might rank great in the, in the rural area, but you get into the Metro and there's, you're, you're not even there. You're not, you're not found even yeah. when you're searching from your home computer outside the area, because it's got your cookies. It knows that, Hey, he likes this site. He's been to it a hundred times editing it. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know that people too, they search a specific sit, uh, uh, search key. So let's say, you know, uh, window uh, washing company in Mooresville, North Carolina, 28115. And they're like, I rank first. And it's like, no one ever has searched for that. If you just type in window washing uh, in Mooresville, you know, like if you just change one word, all of a sudden it changes everything. And you have to rank for all of that. You can't just like pick one phrase and be like, I'm good. Absolutely. And that's the long tails are good. There's still traffic that goes to those, you know, there is a, a few people that might go that long or it might be an autofill that Google populates for you and people click it. Yeah. But there are the, the money keywords that, that are the important ones, you know, the, the city descriptor pressure washing. I mean, that's, that's usually the number one everywhere. Sometimes yeah. it's just pressure washing and you have to rely on your geolocators to, to pick you up there. Um, but I'll tell you, that's, that's the biggest thing. There's a lot of people that have a false, false reality of where they, they are on the internet because they just don't have the tools or the know-how on how to search themselves. Yeah. It's not how you're searching or how you're finding it. It's how everybody else is, you know? And that's the Absolutely. funny thing with keywords is I've tried personally going into keywords and be like, okay, let's see what keyword. And you look at these keywords and it's like, that's the highest ranking one. I would have never thought that it was worded that way, but people just you know, they'll put it that way, you know, and, and it's, it's absolutely funny. And it, it's crazy that the number of things that are Google autofill, like you wouldn't guess that people would search that, but Google, I I'm guilty of it. I type in three letters and scroll down and click what Google tells me to search for. And sometimes it's the third or fourth thing that, you know, is a little bit longer tail because it's more relevant to what I'm searching. Yeah. And, and that's that sometimes those searches get big numbers because everybody's thinking just like, like I am when they're searching.
So yeah. Yeah, let's talk Facebook for just a second. Like Facebook, I always tell people Facebook is almost like its own internet, right? Like there's the internet and then there's Facebook. Facebook's algorithms, meaning how they like can find who it is that's looking, right? They can't technically know your name and that type and put it all together, but they can say, okay, this particular person likes window cleaning. They like, uh, you know, mountain biking. They like hiking. They like all this stuff. They can put that together and then your avatar image kind of is this. They can put it all in that. So there's so much targeted goodness that comes out of Facebook, but it's its own creature. It's its own beast. Like, tell me a little bit about Facebook. Why is it different? Why should anybody be focusing on Facebook? It's not just to kind of talk about your puppy, your new puppy, uh, you know, <laughs> sure. whatever, and uh, what you ate for dinner. I'll tell you what that, but that all plays into it. I mean, yeah. I, I'll be talking to my wife about, you know, what do you think about looking at hot tubs this weekend? And then I get on my phone two minutes later and, oh, wow, look, there's a hot tub ad. It's just, it's Doesn't crazy how much they know. Oh, it's yeah. gotta come on. <laughs> but I'm, I, I don't know that for sure. Things. Obscure <laughs> but... things. This is, this is a true story. So we have, I'm here, we have a little lo local rate rodeo. It's literally like this, uh, maybe like a hundred seats, you know, it's like a, on a farm around here, but they have it every Sunday. And I was talking to my wife about this rodeo thing and riding bulls. And I think they ride bulls there. I don't know if they like do the horses, but I think they ride bulls. I think they're pretty sure they're riding. But the only time I've ever said anything, never looked up anything, everything. I had ads for bull riding all over. Like I, they, it has to listen to you. There's no other way. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, it's crazy. And, but it's good as far as, you know, a business goes, because there's so many data points. I mean, it is scary how, tar how targeted you can get with your, your target audience. I mean, you can get down to some really crazy details that you wouldn't think they had on you. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, Facebook, I, we have struggled with Facebook since the beginning. We've never had anything that worked. We've, we've hired every company that we can find and it just never works. And about a year ago, we hired a, a guy off of the the, the uh, WCR. I always say the forums. I still can't get that out of my, my head. <laughs> uh, off of the uh, off of the, I, it might have been pro window cleaning. I don't know, but we got recommended by one of our clients to him, and we had seen him in the in the industry for a long time. And we said, you know what? Let's give it a shot. We'll test again the way that we figure out everything, testing it on our own company, yeah. and we put it to work. And it just blew up. I mean, I've never seen Facebook ads work like this. So immediately, what do we do? Our wheels start turning and we think, okay, here we go. Let's bottle this again. So we, uh, Ryan Johnson's his name. I'm sure that you guys have, uh, most people have heard of him. He's been in the industry for a while. He, uh, we went down, met with him. We uh, said, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to pitch a product. We'd like to have you on our team. He agreed. Uh, he's still, you know, working independent. He still has his window cleaning company down there in Arizona. Um, he's, but he's our, he's our guru. He's just yeah. killing it. I mean, especially anybody that's doing Christmas lights right now. Christmas lights are amazing for this. I mean, people, it's, it's something that's kind of flashy, kind of exciting. And yeah. I'll tell you what, we did Christmas lights last year. We were getting leads for four to five dollars a piece. I mean, just that's like, that's like four to five times less than our, our AdWords that we're paying yeah. for each click. I yeah. mean, just absolutely killing it. So um, we, we brought him on, you know, he is, like I say, he's still, he's, he's doing this, um, you know, part-time with his window cleaning part-time. He's, he's got that pretty well running, but um, we're, we're only able to take on about two to three people a week. And we're already right now we're sitting on a two week waiting list just for Christmas lights. So uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, it's been amazing. He, his product, I mean, like Justin has literally screenshots ready to go for anybody that wants to see how well this is working. Yeah, so. that's nuts. Facebook is one of those things. If you can dial into Facebook on top of everything else, Facebook is its own thing. Like I can, you know, if uh, Jane Smith is one of my customers, all of Jane Smith's friends are probably in the same uh, financial background. They're probably about the same age. They probably have about the same amount of kids, the same kind of pets and interests, the kind of same person who I know is my target market. And I can find that. I mean, this is the same way when people get scared of technology and information. So, I mean, there's been coupons forever, right? A coupon does the exact same thing. The little serial number on there tells them where they got it from. So if that coupon came from the newspaper or it came from a magazine or it came from whatever, they can see that coupon was here used here more times than this. I mean, they've always been trying to understand buying base, their customer base and all that. And that's what Facebook's done. The new one's TikTok. 
By the way, if you just think about dance videos, TikTok is absolutely absurd. It is the smartest like Gary V is saying that there it's the hot it's like the hottest thing right now but it's got the cheapest uh, amount for uh, contact right now but it just by watching it it knows where you're watching and how long you're watching and just by scrolling their main feed which is little videos they can go anywhere from uh, 3 minutes i think or down but just watching that you start watching whole videos on window cleaning and you skip the other videos of some dumb tween dancing to some dumb song i've never heard It will change that. And within one hour, it is almost tailored exactly to you automatically. And you didn't do anything. It knows that much, but that's another thing. These, the, all these pieces put together are all helping kind of on the digital platforms. And that's the biggest thing, you know, we've, we've had people ask us before, if you're so good at SEO, why do you need AdWords? Why do you need, you know, Facebook? I mean, with with AdWords, about 30% of the people are clicking into that, into that ad and 70% are going down in the organic. But there's, there's one, you know, one reason I don't yeah. want 30% of those clients to go to my competitor. You know, yeah. we want yeah. all of them. We want everybody we can get. And, you know, it's the, the great thing is, is when, when, the way this, when you start getting so many people coming in, you get to ge- tailor what you want to do. You don't have mm-hmm. to sit there and hope that you get every single client. You can yeah. start getting those, those good clients, or you can also raise prices. You can, you can be more than a competitor because you have so many leads coming in that you don't have to get every single job. So yeah. it's, it really is important to get the whole, the whole spectrum. And, and you know, it's touching back on the SEO and taking time. SEO does take time. In the long term, SEO is a great investment. In the short term, it's not the best investment. The best investment would be a Facebook ad or AdWords. Those are instant. Those are great because you turn them on and they're ready to go. You're getting leads instantly. But yeah. it's just like a water faucet. You turn off that faucet, the stream stops. Where SEO, you don't get them right away. The faucet turns on slowly. And once it's full blast, that keeps on running long after you stop doing SEO. It'll, yeah. it'll hang in there. So Yeah, that, that's the... I always bring this and you guys that are listening or listen all the time, you know, what I want to bring up McDonald's McDonald's. There's not a person in the country who doesn't know what a McDonald's is two years old and older. Right. But yet they're still in every magazine and newspaper billboards. They're on TV. They're on the radio. Why are they everywhere? It's because everybody finds things different places. You have to be everywhere. That's why all of this put together kind of works so stinking well. Absolutely. That's uh, and, and I'll tell you what, my daughter, three years old, when I get home and I ask what she wants for dinner, I guarantee it's going to be a McDonald's. That's, <laughs> That's because she was old, watching, she knows uh, where to go. <laughs> yeah, the doodle bops, and they just happen to be, you know, carrying McDonald's or something. It's amazing. Yeah. This is it's why it's everywhere, you know. Absolutely. But I do have one thing before I let you go. I have to say, so, again, if you're using a company or you're not using a company or you're thinking about using a company, there's horror stories, just like everything. A contractor, right? I'm going to remodel my house. I give him ten thousand dollars. He runs. That's like a common thing people know about. In the SEO world, SEO is almost a four letter word where people have given money. And I know companies, and I've no uh, SEO companies who are no longer around, or not at least in our industry anymore, because of what they've done in the past. Of people paid them, they go, hey. You got to wait six months before you see any results. And then after six months, they're like, oh, it didn't work. Well, now you can stop. I got six months of your money. Like, how does somebody know what they're getting with an SEO company? There, you know, that's the hardest thing. That's, there's no good way to gauge it without having reputable sources that are telling you, hey, this is the way to go. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've ran into situations where people have gone through that and they go, the company just goes. And we've ran into that where people have had a website built. And the designer goes to them and the site's sitting on the server and we can't get a hold of it from the, from the designer. Or, you know, what's another, another thing is if you have somebody that purchased your domain name for you, go have them transfer it into an account. So set, set up a GoDaddy account, a Namecheap account, something. Get that domain put into your name. That way, if they ever do go under anything like that, you don't have to worry about losing that domain name. We've, yeah. we've ran into that a couple of times where there's been two that we've had to say, hey, we need this domain name. If my, our client doesn't get it, we are going to have them go through litigation. You know, it's, wow. uh, and, and it, it always works out. I've never had one that, where somebody couldn't get it back from them, but some people hold them hostage and say, no, you're going to pay a couple thousand for that domain name. So yeah. I technically, uh, the thing you signed 10 years ago says that it's actually legally mine and you have to buy it from me now for, 
Yeah, exactly. A lot of people fall into that pit, pitfall, especially after you've had it for, let's say you've had it for that 10 years, that thing has, has some power. Right? I mean, any, mojo. yeah, any, any site that's been around 10 years is going to have some sort of power, you yeah. know, unless it was just, everything was done wrong. Google hates it, but it's uh, you don't want to lose that. That's uh, that's something that is very important to make sure that you own the domain, you know, and even better yet, the, you know, if the hosting, you know, a lot of times people have their websites on their, the designer is hosting. Um, you know, we have that too. A lot of people like to go on our hosting, so we don't charge for it. So, yeah. but it's it's important to make sure that there's there's some sort of fail safe with the designer in case they do. You know, a lot of people get into this for a year or two years, get in, make some money, and get out and just and run. And it's it's a common horror story in this industry. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that very much sucks, but. I do appreciate you uh, hanging out with me. Um, I know we've been trying to do this for like, you know, ever. It feels like two years, but yeah, I'm glad that we finally I, did. At we're least two have years. To do another, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going we're to have to do another one too. We, we didn't cover enough today, but uh, I do have one thing to say. So if you're listening or watching, you have to look at getting a website. I know people who call me all the time. They talk about SEO. They talk about websites give them a call. I don't want to make this a commercial. That's not what it's for, but you guys know that I love Monk SEO just in general. Justin Monk, Bobby, both you guys I talk about like every other week. So make sure to check them out. But if they want to talk to you, if they want to talk, just even ask questions, right? Like you guys are cool. Like you're in the industry. You understand it's not this weird salesy thing, but what's your contact information? How can somebody get a hold of you? All right. So the best way to get hold of us, uh, justmonkseo.com, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm Bobby at justmonkseo.com, uh, Justin at justmonkseo.com. Those will all get us. And then I'll tell you what, you want to get a hold of Justin direct. He's always willing to take a phone call. His cell phone, direct cell phone. This is not an 800 number. This is not uh, going through a call center. 509-808-0787. That'll ring him direct and uh, you'll get you'll get the man himself on the phone. Nice. That's, that's the thing. Like the, the way that we do nation in general is just to help people. That's what you guys do. Like literally, I know that Justin just sits down and we'll talk to people for 30 minutes and then they'll be done. and be like, well, I don't think I'm ready, but cool, man. Well, let me know. Like, that's just, it's, it's genuinely helping an industry. So I really never, that. never any pressure. That's the, that the thing about an SEO is you can always tell a good SEO because you can go out and it's not like uh, saying that you're the best swimmer, right? If you're the best swimmer, you're going to go out, you're going to beat, uh, it's not Michael Phelps anymore, but you're going to beat whoever the fastest is in the world. That's yeah. how SEO is too. If you can't rank for your own terms, you're not a good SEO. And that's where yeah. it's like, you know what, if you if we're the right fit for you, we can show you the rankings. We can show you our clients rankings and uh, we'd love to help you. Proofs in the pudding, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, I very much appreciate it. And I appreciate you listening or watching no matter how you are. Uh, shameless plug again, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. So give me a call or shoot me a text 862-312-2026. If everything is in your cart, you want to shop and just let me put it in, cost you nothing extra. Just be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Let me know. And I put it in. Super awesome. Awesome virtual high five. Plus mention cool kid the words cool kid and i'll make sure to include uh the limited edition sticker whatever's currently if you want more stickers like here that are behind me go to awcmag.com get a subscription to the most awesome magazine for window cleaners ever in the history of ever at least that's what i think uh go and get that that is even more like an awesome one it is a mail to your door subscription and it comes with a sticker sheet every month so we'll get that but uh either way i really appreciate it bobby thanks for hanging out with me and until next week Go out there and be epic.